You're listening to Cursory Overload. Heavy metal. Heavy metal. Heavy metal. Heavy metal. Coming to you from the back room of your parents' favorite porn store, it is Cursory Overload. And we're in. Hey, everybody. This is Eric, a.k.a. K-Dog. I'm Cursory Overload. What's up, everybody? This is Enrique Pato Polaris from uh, Cursory Overload and The Powerhouse, if you've been listening. Uh, I have been listening. And uh, how are you motherfuckers doing today? Everybody, I hope y'all are having a, well, as good of a time as you can have. Pretty much, yeah. You know, it's been a crazy, crazy week. That it has. You know, this episode, uh, we uh, put it out on video on TikTok and on the YouTube page. Uh, we made like a little video with uh, showing episode 20, 21? No, it's 22. 22. This is episode 22, yes. And uh, we're, we're going to talk about someone that has influenced, uh, pre- well, probably the generation previous to ours, but definitely ours, you know, has been, and obviously the younger generations, I mean. This person yeah, think, has been a big influence. I think he was really influenced. I think our generation generation was when he was it was really really hardcore, because um, most yeah. of his work was done between like sixty and seventy two or so. Sixty two, seventy two, nineteen sixty one and seventy three. I believe is when right. all the stuff happened, and of course, right, obviously, two thousand eight with Iron Man. That's when everything just got reignited, and it is what it is today. Right, and, and, and that universe. seventy, that seventy three is right when that was starting to really get to the the, the height. Is when people like me and you were were being born, pretty uh, much. You know, so we kind of grew up with it. As far as our parents were kind of, uh, they were already adults by the time by the time it hit. Yeah, pretty much by the time Spider Man came out, and you know the comic books and. Right, right, right. <sighs> but before we get into that, I do have one little tiny piece, if you would be so kind as to let me speak for just a moment. Sir? Here in the uh, the K-Dog uh, household, found out today we had a uh, a family member, uh, if you will, uh, uh, pass away. Okay. Um, his, his, his life and lack thereof it will, will shape us for as long as we live. So mm. right now I'd like to say a, a fond farewell, a, a, a bid you farewell. I hope you have a, a safe journey wherever it is you go. Mr. Boogaloo the Hamster. Oh, crap. Dang. He lived with us for about six months, and re- today we found him stiff as a born head. Ouch. Yep. I was at work, so whatever. Yeah, Ugh. wife found him behind his little gingerbread house. And oh my gosh! No, uh, how how did Ari took to that? Was that hers? Yeah, that was her baby. Yeah. Um, you know, I remember uh, when when my oldest uh, her we couldn't have pets because we always lived in apartments. So the first time I ever got her anything were fish, you know, goldfish, and right. I bought a whole mess of them because not all of them survive. So of course. True that. Overnight, I mean, I think out of a dozen, like seven of them went. And in the morning, she was in tears. And this was years ago, so I can only imagine how your little one must be, you know. Oh yeah, well, well, I had to, I we had went out and bought a fish, uh, one of those little colorful beta fishes, uh-huh. and she named it Hooey Hoo. Okay. Okay. Well, Hooey Hoo never really acted right. Okay. And one day, Hui Hu just completely quit swimming. Mm. So I got the illustrious honor of telling my then five year old daughter that her fish, Hui Hu, had died. Okay. So a couple of weeks later, I ended up buying her Mr. Boogaloo. Mm. So everything was going great. Mr. Boogaloo was living life. Uh, and then today, he fucking died. Oh, shit. But you know how it is. You know, yeah. fucking little rodents, they live, they they die, whatever. 
Yeah, for a minute there when you said death in the family, dude. Uh, well, I mean, it, it is important because pets become family. It's it, it, it's funny. I mean, it, little kids hold on to, and even adults. I mean, not just little kids. I mean, yeah, he was a. It just goes to show, like this little motherfucker was on his wheel all the time, mm. all the time. So I I personally believe cardio killed him. So you know that's why I'm a big advocate of the. What is the fitness protection program? I think exercise <laughs> is overrated. <laughs> oh, gosh, man. Oh, well, oh, sorry to I, hear that, man. I but... just want to put that out there. Just in case someday, when she's older, she happens to turn into this ready, tune, tune on and, and listen to, you know, when I'm dead and gone and I'm dust. And, and she comes, you know, maybe stumbles across this, some of these episodes and she can be like, oh, I remember that little thing. You that know, thing used to bite me. It's funny here how when we get to this age, but more than anything, that's uh, a lot of the times, uh, that's what I think of when we're recording. I'm like, years later, when we're no longer around, maybe my kids will stumble upon them and be like, damn, I didn't know dad could talk all kinds of shit like that. Right. Dad you was kind of cool. Maybe he did know what the fuck he was talking about. You or know? something like that. Or, dang, good thing. They did. God, <laughs> I'm glad he loved me. Said, dang, good, you know. But, I don't know. What uh, I'm just saying. Going, going further on, uh, as, as all of you may know, the the, the comic book creator, um, icon, um, Stan the man. I, I, yeah, Stan the man Lee. Um, he passed away at age ninety five. Monday, uh, he, November. Yeah, he went he went home to be with his wife, uh, whom he loved very very much. Uh, yeah. But all of us, all of us that were that were raised and grew up, you know, loving comics. Uh, well, the thing is, is that even uh, with, without comics, I mean, you know, because well, I got into comic books a little bit later on, you know. But uh, I remember this, we're, we're going to travel back in time to 1979 when Pato was a little duckling and starting kindergarten. I had a lunchbox. And that thing was the metal ones, you know, the one that had the little thermos inside. Right, right. And you could put a sandwich. I like in. those. Yeah, you could really whack a motherfucker with those. <laughs> <laughs> As I did. God and, uh, damn got in trouble for it. <laughs> We're doing so good. <laughs> but all I'm saying is it had, I remember it. I mean, I wish I still had it, you know, but it had Thor, Daredevil, Spider-Man, The Vision, Scarlet Witch. It had practically all the Avengers, Iron Man. And it's funny because Iron Man, they used to draw him differently, you know, like a little V thing on the on the mask. It right. didn't look as cool right. as it did now. Very blocky. Yeah, so I remember I had that. So, And then, of course, I mean, if you grew up in our generation, I mean, watching TV, you know, Saturday morning cartoons, some of the commercials there for, you remember Underoos? Yep. <laughs> Fucking Spider-Man Underoos, Captain America Underoos. I never got any because, you know, my mom was like, you're going to get one on sale, motherfucker. So, you know, it was fruit of the loom tidy whities for me. But right. <laughs> but I used to see that on the on the commercials and like, look, mom, Spider-Man, it comes with a shirt. It comes with this. And, blah, blah, blah. and we'll see how much it is. But like I said, it throughout our childhood, I guess it, it was all over the place. The electric company. They used to do a Spider-Man skit. Yep, I remember that. Yep. Yeah, that's right. That's right. I'll, very, very cheesy. But yeah, then again, so was the. I remember there was a, an original TV show for a while there. I yep. have vague memories of watching the Spider Man TV show. Right. I think I got into comic books when I was a teenager. Uh, hmm. I don't know. I, I'm not going to say I had a I had a rough life. I was just a very lost individual when I was growing up and I'm very open about it after having been adopted uh I never really really felt like I fit in anywhere you know you know it's funny because sometimes we go through that uh my parents couldn't keep their act together when we were younger so a lot of the times whenever you know things would shit would hit the fan they'd send me over to my uncle's and I I spent a lot of time at my uncle's house because, right. well, you know, mom had, my dad would split, mom would go to stay at a different place. So either mom was in Coachella, uh, dad would go wherever the fuck he'd go. And um, 
they either ship me to El Centro or Calexico or some, you know. It was yeah, I crazy. think uh, for me, I, I think what, what comics represented to me, um, and I can't say the same thing about Batman and, and all that, but what Marvel in particular meant to me was ordinary people from broken lifestyles could amount to something and do something in the world. Well, yeah. No, what I meant to say when I, when I shared that with me is like, I get you not being, not really feeling like you belong, you know? Right, right. And um, I, like I said, I had my share of that. And, and I was with family. But a lot of the times you're like, yeah, okay, it's my uncle's house. And, and although they treated me, you know, like one of the kids, I was never, at, at least at my uncle's house. <laughs> right. And that was the way it was when I was adopted. Like, you know, I had loving yeah. parents and, and, you know, I had a brother and I had a sister and, and, uh, but you know, you always have that, that in the back of your head, you know? Yeah. Um, but you know, comics kind of gave me a chance to, to see like, Hey, I, you know, anybody can, you know, this shit could happen to anybody. Yeah. Pretty um, much. Uh, and just no. cause you're a Joe Schmo, you can, you can do good in the fucking world. Yeah, um, it's uh, that's what I was I was gonna go there, and you know, uh, I didn't want to listen to anybody else's podcast before we did. I, I did a a, pot, a powerhouse, a small thing, you know, for Stan Lee, but I did it before I listened to anybody else's podcast because I didn't want to be influenced. Right. But you know something that I found fucking funny that most everyone that has a podcast and talked and has talked about Stan Lee, things that they have said in common. That a lot of us got a, our moral compass. Yeah, and it comes from comic books. You know, the whole with great power comes great responsibility. Knowing that you don't have to be like super. Well, you know, like the DC heroes at first, they were all practically perfect in every way. Right. And the Marvel hey. heroes, they showed that they were damaged individuals, fucked up. You know, uh, poor. They had to work for a living. Yeah, uh, I think growing up, reading, I, I read a lot of Wolverine comics, and, and I think I really, I, I tended, or uh, yeah, is that the word tended? Tent? I, tended? I had a tendency. Yeah, to, to lean more towards uh, Wolverine being that, you know, I, I had a lot of anger issues, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, and and, and the, the character Wolverine, you, you, you would see, you know, yeah, he, yeah, he had well, a bad well, fucking temper. There's a there's a reason why we get along, motherfucker. Right. <laughs> Apparently, we both identified as mutants. Right. <laughs> <laughs> as a kid, I guess you know, uh, Nightcrawler was always my guy. You know, because always he looked odd to begin with, but the ability to teleport. And sometimes when you were a kid, you didn't want to be in certain places. You just wanted to teleport the fuck out of there. I always thought oh, yeah. that. I was like, shit, you know. <laughs> and I was always I mean, like. Girl, you know, with Wolverine, I was, uh, as I got older, I, I would always gravitate towards, I don't want this to come off wrong. I always gravitated towards more of the, the book smart kids. Well, let me rephrase that. I hung out with all the burnouts and all the, you know, the smokers and the drinkers and all that. That was my, my crew. Yeah. But we always tended to welcome with open arms all the, the real book smart kids, the kids that were getting bullied. You know. well, yeah, you have to understand. Not all nerds are A plus students, right? <laughs> you got yeah. A the, lot of a lot of the crew I ran with were you know they were they were failing at school, but they were brilliant in certain subjects, you know. Yeah. And, and and we would take these kids in, under our wings and welcome in, them into the fold and and protect uh, them. You I know, I was an outcast too. I think one of my powers in school was being invisible. Especially to girls. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? We, we really got to stop this. I mean, I, I'm tired of being who the fuck is you. <laughs> right. <laughs> been, been who the fuck is you all my life. <laughs> uh, no, but uh, and, uh, like I said, I was listening to other podcasters, uh, especially Kevin Smith. So I don't know if you heard the last Fat Man Beyond. Uh, I listened to about half of it and then I got, I got sidetracked. I got busy at work and I had to turn it off. Yeah, well, that, that's what I'm saying. I mean, we all, I mean, they have an advantage over us because they met the man. Right. Me, uh, well, we, we, I never had the privilege. I mean, I made the attempt a year and a half ago 
because uh, T-Bone was what nine, gonna be ten. Yeah. 